and welcome to 10 Count on UCN Live. I'm Steve Kim, joined by Michael Baca and the editor of Ring Magazine, Doug Fisher. We look back at Superfly 2, February 24th, at the Forum in Sikrasat Sorongvasai, retaining his WBC title with a hard-fought decision over Juan Francisco Estrada, also on this HBO bill. McWilliams Arroyo with a 10-round decision over Carlos Cuadras, and for the IBF flyweight title, Donnie Nietes with an emphatic seventh round stoppage over Juan Carlos Revico. Doug, uh, 2017, Sikrasat Sorongvasai was kind of like the breakout player of the year. I think early on in 2018, he stamped himself as a legitimate elite blue chip boxer, has yeah, he not? Absolutely. Um, in fact, the ring ratings mm. panel was arguing over this weekend as to where he lands in the pound for pound top 10. Mm. We had panelists suggesting maybe he go all the way to number one. We had panelists saying he's top five. We had others saying, well, he just moves up a spot or two. It just depends on how you view him. But the, the, the fact that everybody is talking about him as somebody who is an elite boxer now, not just this big strong tank who makes for good fights. I think going into the Chocolatito fight, the first one last March, he was largely unknown to the American public. Um, even unknown to like really hardcore boxing fans. Uh, and he announced himself by going toe to toe uh, with uh, a first ballot uh, future Hall of Famer in Roman Gonzalez. There were still questions about him though because that decision was, it was controversial. And you wondered, well, you know, maybe Chocolatito was getting old in the tooth or whatever. The WBC orders an immediate rematch and Chocolatito, broke my heart, gets blown out of the water. So you have half of boxing saying, no, Sorongvasai is for real. This guy is, he's, he's like the puncher of the, of the division. And then you have other people saying like, no, no, he fought a Chocolatito who had just extended himself too far. Chocolatito is, is better at junior flyweight or flyweight than Junior Bantamweight, he was too heavy, and he's also had a, a long, hard, punishing career. So in, in effect, Sorongvasai got lucky. But this past Saturday against Juan Estrada, he's fighting a guy who's 27 years old, a guy who carries 115 pounds very well, who had tested himself at the weight in the co-feature to Superfly 1 when he outpointed and, and dropped uh, Carlos Quadras. So he was fighting a legit dude. The fight was good enough to where, you know, the, the vacant Ring Magazine 115 pound title was on the line. And what I like about this fight is that he wasn't, so Rungvasai so wasn't just a uh, relentless aggressor. He took a step back a few times. He commanded the center of the ring, but we saw some craft. And what I saw, and maybe not everybody agrees with me, you guys let me know your opinion, I saw a complete boxer puncher. I saw somebody in there with some real ring craft, ring generalship, um, and some skill. Question is though, did Rungvasai actually win the fight? There was debate. Mike, you were about two seats from me. How'd you score it? I scored it a draw. Uh, live, wow. scored it a draw. Um, but I thought the decision went to the right guy. I, did, I couldn't see, I couldn't get seven rounds for Estrada in this fight. Um, yes, I was giving these close rounds to the power puncher, the guy landing the more effective shots, I thought was Sirisicate the entire time. Um, Estrada still put on a very good performance. Um, he showed that he is the stylist that he claims to be. Um, he fought backwards very well, counterpunched very well, had the, had the strong, fast hands. Um, but he couldn't, I don't, in my opinion, I don't think he could overshadow what Sirisicate was doing in there. And what he was doing was very often landing flush on Estrada's face. You can see the sweat spray off into the night. His body work is, I mean, we saw it in the, in the first two uh, Gonzalez fights. His body work is superb. Um, and Srisakit is just, it's an amazing story to, to really find out where he came from. This guy was collecting garbage out in Thailand, had a little bit of Muay Thai experience. Somebody convinced him to go up in Japan, fight a couple times. He lost all three fights, two of them by KO. and. One day he sat down and figured, all right, I'll give this boxing thing a shot. Yeah, one, three, and, and, and one. Where, and look where he is now. In his first five. And, and Doug, going into the pound for pound debate, I don't really get into all that, but I will say this strength of schedule, 
has to matter because anyone right. can look good against a mannequin or hitting a heavy bag. Now, uh, if I was drawn into that debate, I'd say two things. Sikret said Sorongasai, based on his last three fights, has to be in the top five. And the winner of the Cruiserweight Tournament in the World Boxing Super Series, based on resume, strength of schedule, quality of opposition, if those two guys are not in that top five, I don't think we're basing it on actual merit. You're and not, that, that's right. the big thing. You're not thing. basing it on accomplishment. You're not basing it on quality of opposition. At which case, it's just silliness. It's basically... It's Who's just, your favorite fighter? Yeah. Who looks yeah. good to you? Yeah. Who, who do you identify with? Who has with? a great record on paper? Right. Whose style yeah. would you want to be if you were a yeah. boxer? Or, you know, it's, it, or it becomes this imaginary game where it's like, well, you know, I think if Sri Saketsu or Rungvasai was a welterweight, I still think Errol Spence would beat right. him, you know? Or if Errol Spence <laughs> was a junior best, it gets really weird, you know what I mean? And it's, you know, it's mental masturbation to begin with, okay? Oh, I but, love that term. But oh, there I love is that some, term. Uh, you might have coined it, you know? <laughs> I did. But um, <laughs> it, it, you do need, I think, it, to have any sort of relevance, you do need to base it on some concrete things. And quality of opposition counts. And I think that was the argument for those folks who wanted him up in, in the top five is that they say, listen, he's beaten better guys in his last three fights than a lot of these guys who are rated ahead of him, such as Errol Spence. And they even tossed the monster in there. They said, yeah. hey, the monster hasn't fought guys like Chocolatito yeah. or, 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 with, or El Gallo. With that said, should they have a rematch in, let's say, six to seven months, which is the wish of Mr. 360 Promotions, Tom Loeffler, based on Estrada closing hard, especially in the 12th, which Absolutely. is an amazing round, who has the momentum? Oh, that's a good question. I haven't really thought about that. You know, I, it, it's kind of a toss-up, which is great. You always want to, yeah. when you're going into a first fight or the second fight, you want it to be a toss-up. On one hand, I could, I could look at Sri Saket Sorongvasai and say, dude, you're 31 years old, which is getting up there for, you know, flyweights and super flyweights. You, um, you don't make 115 pounds easily. No, no. Now, Juan Estrada stepped up from flyweight to junior bantamweight in search of big fights, like he got with Sor Rungvasai. He says he can still make 112. He says he came up to 115 for, for more money and for higher profile fights. Okay. Sri Saket Sor Rungvasai at the weigh-in was practically out on his feet. Yeah. He was dizzy. He needed help walking around. And he rehydrated beyond featherweight. Am I right? Yes. I think he rehydrated around 130. Like, yes, he was, he's a junior. Uh, he's a, he was a junior lightweight on fight night. That tells me that really he could be fighting at 118 or 122. Like the monster is going up to those weight classes because he walks around at lightweight, right? Yeah. Um, so at some point when you're in your 30s and you've had hard fights, the first fight with Chocolatito and this fight with Estrada, that takes a lot out of you. And you're also battling the scale. At some point, yeah. you hit the wall and you got nothing left. And he's that kind of guy. He's gonna fight balls to the wall until he's got nothing and just, you know, gets destroyed in the ring. And there's honor in that, by the way. Mm -hmm. uh, but Estrada, working against him is the fact that he could not, now he busted up Sorungvisai's face. He could not hurt Sorungvisai. Maybe in the 12th round, where Sorungvisai was a bit gassed, maybe he got some, some, some respect uh, with, with his punches. But Sor Rungvisai took his best shots and hurt him in return. Every time, particularly in the middle rounds, when Sor Rungvisai connected with Estrada, it moved him. You could tell. It wasn't just connecting. It was hurting him. So he has to take that psychological baggage uh, into the rematch. And I don't know which is the bigger detriment, to be quite honest. Yeah, and I think Superfly 3 will be something very, very anticipated. And Tom Loeffler says... He liked to keep that in L.A. My final thought, will end it with you. Donnie Nieta, did he make the statement he needed to be invited back? Absolutely. I think the crowd was a little bit unfair to around there. They are already booing. Yeah. Mexican oh, savages. Right. That's but a tough, now that's you, the definition of a tough crowd. You yes, bloodthirsty absolutely. Mexican fans here. <laughs> no, no holding, no running around. Yeah, nothing. In there. It was, you know, it wasn't just good boxing. They were landing quality punches. Yeah, Nieta impressed me seeing him for the first time live. Very accurate, not a bruising puncher, but very accurate, very effective. I, I liked him. I think he should be invited back. And he's oh. a special champion. This guy has uh, been a title holder for more than 10 years. Strawweight, junior flyweight, and flyweight. And he has aspirations to step up to yeah. 115 pounds. So he's kind of following in the footsteps of Chocolatito. Mm -hmm. 
Um, he hasn't lost in almost 15 years. Yes. Uh, One and, loss. And, and he's like fought 47 well, fights, I believe. Yeah, if you guys go to Box Rec, you see he's fought quality straw weights, junior fly weights, and fly weights. So there you have it, our recap of Superfly 2 on the 10 count on behalf of Michael Baca and Doug Fisher. This is Steve Kim saying, till the next round, goodbye, everybody.